Hello, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. We see a lot of people joined us. It is going to be really interesting. I hope you all are excited. Today is going to be a really, really great evening. I hope you all remember uh, that this is the second panel. We have already had the first panel. This is the second panel by Ham. And we are focusing on how to become a teacher of the deaf or a deaf teacher. That is the diploma in education program and the DTI cell programs. There are people who are confused. What is the difference between, uh, are these two courses the same? What are the opportunities? What is the plan? So this is the second panel and we have the DED and the DTISL courses we are going to talk about. And the deadline is on the 21st of July, correct? Uh, maybe it would be extended or not, but yeah, there is some news about that. And, uh, so this is a great opportunity for all of us. We have a great panel today. And uh, you all are welcome to share your questions uh, and uh, take part in the discussions. We have selected a few questions. I'm sorry, uh, all the questions from our audiences, hopefully we'll have, uh, we'll be able to take a few and we'll ask our panelists and uh, you will get the uh, answers, hopefully. And uh, the objective is that hopefully with more and more information and awareness about these two courses, we'll have more teachers, deaf teachers, uh, as well as ISL teachers who are deaf. Then we know that deaf children are facing a lot of issues, barriers, language deprivation. So we do not want that same cycle of uh, discrimination, barriers. We want an improved uh, level playing field for our teachers. We also have, uh, you know, hopefully more and more hearing people who are ISL interpreters as well as teachers who support the deaf community and the deaf professionals. So hope you're ready. With that, we'd like to welcome Sapan. Hey, Sapan here. Tushar, hello. Hi, Sapan. Can we have a little introduction from you? And also let us know um, what do you what you do? Great. I'm really happy to be here at the HAM panel, How to Become a Deaf Teacher. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Sapan. This is my sign name. I'm working with the Haryana Welfare Society for Persons with Speech and Hearing Impairment at Panchkula. I am the ISL teacher as well as the course coordinator. So I have two roles. Oh, that is great. So the first question which I have is the diploma, that is the DTISL program and the DED or the Diploma in Education Hearing Impairment Program. Are these the same? What is the difference? That is a good question. I do know that there is a confusion and there is, it is a totally different course. Let me tell you. <laughs> The DTISL program is a diploma in teaching Indian Sign Language, which is a, a two-year program. And the DED HI program is also a two-year, but that is a subject teacher. That is, you become a teacher of the deaf students in various subjects. Now, for example, if there are deaf uh, people amongst us who want to become subject teachers, they should go in for the diploma in education program. And this is not only for deaf, this is open for both hearing as well as deaf students who want to, in the future, teach deaf children in different schools. So this is teaching subjects. DTISL, so what is this course? This is open only to deaf students who learn two years of Indian Sign Language and uh, they teach ISL. There's so many hearing people who want to learn ISL. So that is great. We will have deaf teachers for that. As well as in school, deaf children will be learning Indian Sign Language as a subject. So you can work as a translator. I mean, deaf ISL teachers are required at so many places, teaching, 
ISL and the NEP, our Prime Minister has already announced that Indian Sign Language will become a subject. And we need careful planning. And we also know that these the ISL, ISL or Sign Language should be teaching, taught by deaf teachers. So that is perfect, the DTISL course. Thanks for clarifying all that, Tushar. Can you tell us that DTISL, how many places about, eight, uh, what, two places or three places offering it? Can you clarify? Sapan says, yes, in Haryana, we have got approval with the Haryana Welfare Society of persons which, uh, with speech and hearing impairment. We have, I mean, yes, again, we have to understand that eight, there's a variation in the sign. So the ISL, DTISL course is available at the Maharishi Dayanand University, which is in Rohtak. Uh, the MDU has uh, collaborated with HWS PSHI. They have never, this is for all of our information. The interpreting courses and other D8 courses are being offered by a lot of institutes, but never has an institute or never has a university offered a sign language program. So the MDU is now offering two programs, which is the DISLI, that is D-I-S-L-I, and the DTISL program. These are the two programs being offered by MDU. And at the Haryana Welfare Society of Persons with Speech and Hearing Impairment, we have the DTISL course and the DEDHI course. So yeah, these are all being uh, held together. So when is the deadline? Is it 21st July? Sapan says, yes, it's very soon. Uh, please, we request everyone to hurry and not take it easy. 21st July is your deadline and that cannot be extended. Do you want to wait another year? So why the wait? Ensure that you fill in the forms quickly and apply. Great, that is, thank, uh, that is really great. Thank you so much, Sapan. Thank you for clarifying. If there are any other questions for uh, from our... Uh, audience which matches uh, the DTISLD8 program, we would like to have Sapan again. Next, we would like to have Pallavi. Pallavi here. Hi, Pallavi. Hello, hello Tushar. So, Palavi, so let me us know your introduction and uh, what you do. Thank you Tushar for inviting me here and also uh, working well with Haryana Welfare Society as well, which is in Panchkula. So I know that till uh, the D8 HI course, right earlier, we have the curriculum where they were focusing mainly on the audiology. The concept was mainly to, you know, something kind of fixing the deficit. And you advocated for that curriculum and now there is an update in the curriculum. Can you explain about that? What actually been happening? Yes, good question you have asked. So, right now, you know, the course, uh, the earlier course was just focusing on a hearing people. So they were, the course was biased and they just like to have a hearing people on our form to teach the deaf students, you know, how it how a deaf person can go ahead and learn about the ideology when they are actually not uh, accepting that fact. So there were people, there were 25 people, deaf people who have applied for the course and five hearing people who applied for this course. So we get for this thing, so it took approx one and a half year to change the curriculum but you know uh, and there was one deaf person from northeast he tried his best but with the one deaf person we can't make it happen we need more of deaf persons if we would have more people who would be applying for the deaf, uh, for this course that we would like to fight for it again and again so they then decided rca accepted so in 2020, they didn't change the curriculum. In 2021, it will be updated. So yeah, the 2020 batch, they has to suffer a lot. I know it's quite suffering for them. But yeah, uh, now we have the new curriculum and now from the 2021 batch, we will be having the updated one. So in the, 
Uh, it, uh, the course basically the two is the second year which has the speech and audiology part and what will be is the first year so we, what would it be changed to yeah. so in the course you know we have two years course. so in the first one we have the first semester this is the sign for first semester so in first semester we have an audiology subject and second and also the speech so that you know you know that it will not accommodate the of deaf people actually it's not uh, which deaf people would accept so we have new two subjects which would be replacing that that yeah uh, maybe deaf people uh, if we would have those curriculum so we don't need to fight again it's so that's what i wanted to know what would be the subjects replaced with and what are the total subjects so uh it's about the deaf culture, but it's kindly related to the sign language. But yeah, there would be a basic of the audiology, you know, the degree of hearing loss, or just not about this uh, detail about speech, but yeah, about the deaf culture, there is more about deaf culture. More about deaf culture. That is really great. So we are really excited and hope that improves the level of education with that deaf children. I mean, it will be really nice for them. Yeah, I'm hoping to. A lot of deaf people have been, you know, I mean, there's a discussion in the community primarily related to the opportunities, basically DED and DTISL, are there job opportunities? Do they get jobs quickly? Is it easy to get jobs? So what are your opinions about that? Right. So after uh, doing this uh, two years course, it's uh, if you want to work in this field, there are a lot of people. There are job opportunities. So in 2021, uh, the, uh, the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court will be Supreme Court will be announcing. They have approved that they need special educate special educators. Can I, can I share the slide please for once? And sure. Okay. To show that information. Yes, you can share now, Pallavi. So Rajasthan, basically the teachers, uh, hearing teachers actually uh, lodged some complaints that uh, not getting permanent jobs. So their advocacy efforts led to RCI, you know, being asked that how many uh, approved, I mean, uh, jobs have been given. So that's a really no, low number. You saw about 20, 28,000 only. There's a huge requirement. That's a really small number. So six months have been given for uh, job advertisements and special educators basically have to be approved. So with this, with the Supreme Court, it will be all you know states. So whosoever have passed their DED and DTISL can get jobs really soon. So that means there's a lot of opportunities, is it? Right. Sapan said, right, uh, the Prime Minister has announced that Indian Sign Language is equivalent to Hindi, English and all other languages. And with that, you see uh, deaf and hearing schools, if they start with sign language as a subject, you can only imagine how many teachers would be required. So that does that mean that a reservation will also be there as the Supreme Court has informed? Yes, there would be the reservation as well, the one person reservation. Thanks, Pallavi, for clarifying. Hope our participants uh, have got some clarity and it's really nice so many have joined and if there are more questions related to your uh, your topics we'll ask you again in the end thanks Pallavi. now i would like to welcome monica can you see me well yes monica yes hello hope you're well Long time no see, really good to see you here. Yeah. 
Yeah, Please right. give us your uh, background and also let us know what you do, your name. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone can see me. I am Monica. This is my sign name. M O N I C A. P U N J A P I Punjabi. Monica Punjabi. So we are running a school, IDBA school, for a long time. So, uh, of my parents, they are the founder of the IDPA school. In 1974, they set up the school, Raj Kumar and Ms. Usha Punjabi. So we had the primary classes from zero to fifth class, then we expanded till eighth class, then 10th, then 12th, and college, and BA education. So yeah, we are running our courses now. So how we expanded and so, both of the deaf person, you know, Sister Rajkumar and Ms. Usha Punjabi, they were interested to make, make it a better place for all the deaf students. So there are hearing staff as well, hearing staff and teachers. We have hostels also where we have the kitchen and where pe people can, uh, you know, all the people are required to know sign language. So if person who get hired, they need to learn the ISL first. So for, it's not the two years mandatory course for everyone, but just to know the basic sign language so that they can communicate with the deaf students. So signing is important for everyone. So IDPA, the name of it is Indoor Deaf Bilingual Academy. What does bilingual means here? So bilingual means where you are teaching deaf people their first uh, they, you are teaching the second language to the first language. So the teacher, whoever is there teaching and communicating with them, trying to solve their problems, the first one is communication, right? Plus they're also teaching to the deaf students in class. So everything has to go through the ISL only. So this, this is the foundation, you know. So after that, they teach them writing, reading, all the subjects, academic subjects, mathematics, science, to all the classes. So it's related to the ISN only where you teach the second language to the uh, first language. So, you know, there are uh, Ms. Usha Punjabi and Mr. Rajkumar, they thought we are a deaf person, we will use sign language, what other thing we can approach, right? So uh, you can see the five years or six years now, the government, are encouraging the use of ISL earlier. You know, if people were get punished in social welfare department or any of the government sector, well, they will come to the school and they will say, oh, people are signing, then they will just, uh, they don't accept that act. And parents would uh, become doubtful, dicey, that their children are learning ISL. So when uh, I try to explain them, ISL is their foundation and it's how you will communicate. If you will not communicate, how will you teach your children? So we need to explain to the parents. It took a long time for parents to understand when their children were developing and when they're studying well, they know about the behavioral things and all. Then they had faith and they thought, okay, this is the right thing. But you know, to explain the government, it's a tough part. So earlier I had experience when I was uh, studying weird also, people were mocking me, you know, Monica school, they are using signing. They are not teaching oralism. They are not following oralism. That's a big problem. And they all family are signing. So I thought whether it's a, a negative thing about ISL to learn and use it. But now you, you know that, yeah we are having a big impact through the government. They are actually accepting and encouraging the ISL. Now, people remember IDBA. Earlier, it was quite difficult for everyone, right? So we have a course. We have a classes from 0 to 12 standard. MP, MP board, we have FEH with MP board. So they can go and they can take examination along with the young people also. We have BA. BCOM, NBA, MCOM as well, and that is affiliated with IGNU in Delhi. Third course, we have BEd in HI. So that is affiliated with Boj, MB Boj University. So 
So all the, uh, the certification which will be provided in these codes that could be applicable in all of the states in India, all over the states. So we have the ISL courses here. L Earlier, we used to have A-level, B-level and C-level, which has been converted into a diploma course, one-year course now, which is a two-year course. So from 2004, we have uh, started these courses earlier. The people also they used to learn A level, B level, C level, C level, and also the hearing people likewise. But now we have a diploma course, and now the deaf people are also learning. So we have a DCA, the computer course as well, one year diploma course, and PG DCA also. We have course, fashion designing course, related to the art. So we have a diploma course for all of these. So is there something new? The fashion designing, some new course has been. No, that was being uh, earlier taught as well. You know, ITI. So they have fashion designing course. Yes, so it's, it's there in all of the organizations. So the most important thing here, ISL subject. So like our honorable prime minister. Modi have announced in 20, I think in 2020 that yeah, ISL would be starting as a subject. Yes. As the national education policy, yes. Yes, yes, national education policy. So before that, you know, we have Hindi language also. We used to teach the mathematics, EBS, all of the academic subjects to the deaf people. I can see you, yes. So, uh, here are the courses. Bhutusha, you can see me as well. So, the subjects, we have uh, five subjects. So, we have added ISL as a subject also. We teach ISL. So, there are uh, deaf students. Some people are good, some deaf students are good signers. So, we have to teach them everything, right? The, the subject, we have ISL subject also from first to fifth standard in first to fifth standard class. So after, <clears throat> so we uh, mention ISL in the report card as well. So Since we are planning, started? I think five or six years ago, six years ago, yeah. So we started, we were like uh, kind of wondering how we can test the uh, how we can do the examination for the deaf students. So we will see if they can express themselves. We can provide them the topics, whether, you know, we can provide the levels, but how to express themselves in ISL. And the parents, you know, they when they uh, have their child in a school, how they can see whether their child are learning well or not. They can see, uh, and ISL is not there in report. And also parents are not aware about the ISL. They can't teach them. They have the limited communication. So if they will have more ISL, uh, they will have more number in ISL, that means they are confident, they are much confident to express themselves. So, and they will also have more percentage. So parents also, they need to know the spoken language, but what about ISL? So you should know ISL as well. So it's been a six years, we are teaching and also mentioning it in the report card. So we have sports activities, they, extracurricular activities too. So we have affiliated with AISCT, which is a sports organization. AIDCAS. So this is the uh, organization which uh, supports the other, the dance and the other activities also. So we have affiliated with both of the organization. So the, every year when they are hosting any sports competition or the dance competition, so we always ask our students to First of all, they uh, take part in state level competitions. So later on, they go on the national level and then on the international level as well. So earlier, we just uh, went to Brazil. So as students, there are two students in- uh, the Olympics, Deaf Olympics? Yes, Deaf Olympics, yeah. So uh, there were two students who went to uh, Brazil. They, they are from our schools and they took part in the competition. Which means when they are studying, they need to uh, have uh, extra skills also and need to be involved in the other activities too. So we encourage them to be a part of the sports and other activities too. So this is our aim. Yeah, that's all. 
more we can discuss later fantastic on. that's a lot of things and lot of uh, network and everything that idba stands for you have explained yeah we are doing lot of works yes so you know due to this pandemic situation we started uh, on isl the online yes, isl classes that. so before covid uh, pandemic people came to the organization at the institution to learn isl but in this pandemic situation we thought what we can do we thought that yeah we can start with online classes there are a lot of people uh, you know speech therapists you know in the uh, south and from all of the uh, states there are people who would like to learn isl but it's a two years course and people have jobs they don't have uh, time so when they get the spare time they learn isl we have level 1 level 2 level 3 we have level, up to level 4 it's not affiliated with rci so rci course is a two years course but this is being run by idba we provide certificates also this means they are learning basic sign language this is ra incredible so there's one more question which i have uh, something related to rehabilitation council of india and the isl committee you would be a member right so what i have observed from the past 2 3 years there is more update more news about the standardization there is more uh, advocacy isl as a subject in schools is there any more information which you can share with us yes so it's more important you know to have the affiliation from rci it's our indian system but when government didn't didn't recognize it so earlier we tried to fight for it for one year that you, there are all of the hearing people who are not ready to accept there are people from the deaf community too and some people who are the audiologists and speech therapists so they were being in the committee from long time so that was a thing which those people they were listening to them also so we had the conference earlier mr madan came over there dr alim as well so we had the presentation pallavi as well there were people who came to the conference but we see that you yeah, are uh, the you are being oppressed they are still not free from their own opinion so yeah we are lucky that you yeah, i am the member of the rci team right now so we asked them to update the uh, course and all it's our, our team we had to swing uh, we had surit ma'am and sunil sibaji atya narayan we have everyone but there were more hearing people who were supporting the audiologist and the speech therapist so after any p they understood and they started accepting the fact but actually in their subconscious mind they were not ready to accept so in the da da hi course they have the audio speech therapy subject correct so there are people who have joined the course and we have also discussed with them as well so when deaf people apply for this course for uh audiology and the speech therapy speech therapist we can uh, have the replacement with the isl and the other subjects right all the hearing people they they don't learn about it they don't provide you with the options they are just given with the audiology and the speech therapy subject only they are not provided with the isl subjects but for the deaf people they are providing with the options but there are more of the hearing people who are doing the course and uh getting their certification so we have asked them to provide the option to the hearing people as well we have asked them to give the more i uh, hours to learn the isl but we don't have deaf teachers in the schools so if we if they have hours to teach isl but they don't have the deaf teachers so then they think if they don't have a deaf teacher to teach isl then they accommodate it with the lesson plan so who will watch and who will supervise so that's the thing that we need to have our deaf teachers over there it's not that we have asked them they to have a full time teacher over there but it was difficult they were not they were saying we have left less teachers how we can do it so i told them if you would have a permanent post of a deaf teacher so that would after that people might do more, more much more courses and they can come there and you can have they come if you can accommodate the time they can do it right they can go and visit many schools in one day we can do this option as well so in ba or ba course there are a lot of institutions who are teaching this course in india we have a lot of courses but 
if you were to die, we don't have deaf teachers. So they are always saying that we don't have deaf teachers. That means they, they can have a guest faculty. So, but then again, they will not see um, whether a deaf person is being hired or a hearing person is teaching. That's a difficult thing here. But yeah, I think they should not be provided with the option. They should It should be a mandatory subject. I really hope that, you know, the advocacy efforts uh, keep going on. But yeah, we see change, right? Yes. So with Hear a Million, maybe you can, uh, being a collective, you can uh, write a letter to MSJ and you can talk to them. It would be basically. Sure, thing. That's, a, that's a great idea. We do have a HAM uh, plan, a separate group, working group. Yeah. So uh, you have a group. There are a lot of deaf people. And who don't have the job, they are still looking for the job opportunity. So with DTISL course, there are no permanent post. So we have IDBA school and Haryana welfare schools and ISLRTC. Three institutions, that's all. What about the other places? No. So three would not be enough to provide them the job opportunity. So when we will be running a batch of 30 people and 20, all of the people, so if they are having a contractual job, whether they can survive in their life that would be difficult so learning isl in da and in b8 also we have the hours for isl so we need to have the uh, isl teachers also so if they will uh, do the course after that they would have the opportunity we we've been presented to the committee a lot of times sometimes they accept it some people don't accept it this is that it will be a in the process we really hope you know that it, together we need unity and we need to keep fighting for it so i think here a million can work on it and you can find an application sure thank you so much that's uh, really nice i'm sure there'll be more questions and we'll ask you please uh, to share your opinions later sure thank you next we will have sunil join us please hi tushar hi sunil can you please let us know uh, about your background and what you are. Sure. This is my sign name. I am S U N I L P A T I D A R, Sunil Patidar. I am an ISL master trainer and also a special educator. Thank you so much, Ham, for uh, getting me on this panel. We really need to have more information about the DTISL course. Yes, I know that you teach in the KISL course. So how many experience you have teaching? Mm, I think it's almost been four, four years since. Okay, so I would like to ask you something related to the KISL course. When the deaf people join your course, it's a two years course. When they are done with their 12th class, whether they are aware about their own skills or after two years, do you see the change in them? Please share your experience. That is great. With the diploma in teaching Indian Sign Language. So the first batch I was, uh, you know, involved, the second, and this is the third batch, and the fourth batch is going to start soon. And my experience was incredible because it was really great to see that, you know, linguistics, practicals, which we uh, do, and the English, which we are teaching to the DTISL children. So the new joinees, when they get... Uh, their admission and they come to the class. See, we have to understand that there is a difference between your everyday language where uh, there are certain aspects uh, of language which are less, but when you come to the course, it becomes, you know, a little heavy because this is an academic course. It's a regular program. With each passing month, it takes time, you know, they start learning and with then, you know, in the beginning, when they feel heavy, then they start getting more interest. So we, uh, you know, start looking at the dictionary, then there are practicals where they have to come in front of everyone and they are, you know, not confident, but we have to keep pushing. We have to motivate them to stand and uh, deliver, express. And when the course is done, you know, I see such change and so much brilliance. And we teach bilingually. And uh, there are theory subjects. For example, you know, there'll be questions and the answers are not from the book. You have to think about what the teacher is asking. And uh, 
in these kind of scenarios, their language develops. In the DTIC program, we also focus on basic English. And this is 10 to 5 all day, not a one hour thing. Imagine an environment where, you know, there's so much of learning and sharing happening. The, really good opportunities to develop and the DTISL if you know if they're deaf students who really want to become ISL teachers there's a great you know great opportunity yeah. you can really you know the change which we see in these students is from involving themselves every day 10 to 5 discussing asking questions sharing the doubts it's the same with a in with a motor vehicle with a bike if you don't use it it gets bad if you use it every day the drive is smooth right thank you so much Sunil, for sharing it in detail so if people would have any doubt and would like to ask you we will have you again thank sure. you so much thank you so now we would like to have Rahul. Hello. Thank you. Hello, Rahul. Hope you're doing well. Can you please let us know about yourself, about speaking and school? Okay. First of all, hello to everyone here. My name is R A H U L. This is my sign name. Great. And uh, the Speaking Hands Foundation. Uh, you know, I'm a consultant there and a counselor. I have been working since a lot many uh, years as uh, an English trainer, sign language oh, trainer, counselor, okay. eight years. And uh, after that, I'm now working with a company. And I'm really happy that uh, we have RCI collaboration also of our courses. So at Speaking Hands, we have KG to 12 schooling. And uh, the education is from the Punjab board. We follow the Punjab board. We have BA, BCom and other you know, courses, PG, uh, UG courses, which is affiliated to the Punjab University. Then we have the Diploma in Education Hearing Impairment Program affiliated to RCI. And very recently, we have the DTISL course, which was recently approved. In our area, you know, uh, and especially with speaking hands, we have been a long time. We have been trying, but we weren't able to get the DTISL course approved. So finally, we got it approved. So the DTISL program at Haryana, at ISLRTC and uh, IDBA, we have 30, 30 seats each at all these institutes, but we think uh, we need more, right? Because going forward, there are 1.8 crore deaf people and uh, these are very few seats. We need to have more institutes offering this course so that there are more children who can apply, who have finished their 12th and the two-year program, uh, the DTISL. And we know that the NEP has already said the ISL will become a subject. Hearing students will be taught ISL. Who will be the teachers? All of you all who finish the DTISL certification, a two-year diploma. So this is what you can do after two years. And uh, yeah, this is something I envision. Okay, so you have speaking hands permission. You're also running the ad course as well, right? So. In my opinion, there are two years uh, course. So do you think there are job opportunities for deaf people or uh, any related to the entrepreneurship work? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So the DTISL graduates who think that they can, you know, become ISL teachers have to be, of course, fluent in ISL, the grammar of ISL. Because you're taught linguistics, we understand a lot about ISL grammar in the two-year two course. You can get into, uh, you know, IIT, other technological universities where also access is required. And uh, 
if there are ISL teachers who start translating technical matter, there'll be more deaf students who can apply in IIT and other technical universities. And we will be thanking so many, uh, so IT, basically information technology, there's so many uh, deaf people and so many job opportunities. So we really need more ISL professionals who work in the sector, who translate and make the sector accessible so that this, trans this also opens up a lot of opportunities. And that's just not one. I think with the DTISL course, job opportunities become very, very easy. So you mean that working in the IIT, working on the video recordings, you know, if you can explain examples? Sure. So it's a mandate, right? Accessibility is a mandate with all sectors, be it education, be it public, uh, you know, communication systems or wherever it is. 2016, we have the RPWD Act, but we know that implementation takes time in the government system. But, you know, with more and more implementation, more funding, more awareness, technology, we will need deaf professionals. We would need professionals who know about accessibility, who know how to translate content. And uh, we need to have great, I mean, all the hearing people would see that there's such wealth, such good language, and that is thanks to the DTISL course. Right, right. Thank you uh, so much for sharing this information. If deaf people would ask question to you, we'll be thanking you once again. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Next, we would like to have Vishw Vishwajit. Vishwajit is with us. Vishwajit request you to uh, please switch on your camera. Hello, Vishwajit. Really nice to see you. Please give us your uh, intro and also let us know uh, what you do professionally. Give us your background, please. So my sign name is this, B-I-S-H-W-H-I-T, Vishwajit. So I'm working with ISLRTC, Indian Sign Language Research and Training Center. This is a sign of ISLRTC. So I'm working on sign linguistic. So yeah, so I'm also teaching in DTIS and also I have IT responsibilities too. So as a trainer and as a teacher with uh, ISL RTC, how many DTIS students are you uh, accepting? So you're asking about now, right now we have 77 deaf students. 77. And how many batches have uh, DTSL batches passed? The first batch is done. Now we have second and third batch. So 30 in one and another 30 in the second one. So overall 97 deaf students, yo, you can say about the 100 deaf, uh, deaf students. And uh, you have been teaching since uh, many years. Can you talk about the job opportunities? Have ISLRTC students got jobs? Yes, so we have some organization, NGOs, Yoniki. Yes, people are getting job as well. They are getting jobs by, by their own. But now we are planning at the airport, at the hospitals, at all the uh, ministerial departments. So we are in a process and we are talking to them. So at the airport, we people who are not aware, we need to make them aware if a person, you know, they can teach to the uh, staff uh, in the airport and the hospitals. And also we have CRC, Composite Regional Center. So in short, it says CRC. So CRC is, for example, we have a <coughs> ISLRTC. We will be opening a five branches as well of ISLRTC. It, it's in the approval. It is going to be in Northeast and in the other places also. So when we will see the places are ready, we will have we will be hiring a teachers and our ISLRTC would be paying for them. So DTISL course or DEd course, whatever we will have, so we will be going to have five branches of ISLRTC. So we would be have we where we might have one deaf course and one in the interpreter. We could have five deaf deaf instructors and the ISL interpreters. Are you talking about classes? So I'm talking about the, not 
branches of the uh, ISLRTC, but th that would be affiliated with ISLRTC. Wow. So I heard that NCRT and ISLRTC have had a collaboration. Can you let us know about uh, what it is, uh, some, some information about this collab? Yes, so NCRT and ISLRTC, they are, uh, NCRT right now translating a book, all of the academic books for the students from first to 12th standard. So right now we have completed first fifth class books and translated in ISL. So for now we are working from six to eight class classes right now. So we are uh, translating history, mathematics, Hindi, all of the academic subjects, and we are translating it in ISL. That is great. The last question which I have now is the classes which at ISL RTC. Do you think there are some uh, challenges which you have successfully overcome, and the materials which you have developed? Because there are some, um, you know, um, discussions that how are. Uh, the materials and uh, other things in, about the academics of the courses. Can you share? Yeah, so we do face challenges also. In GTISM course, the curriculum is very, very good. But, you know, for example, if you want to explain and uh, if you want to explain any particular thing, we need to explain, for example, we are explaining about the wood, how we cut it, how we make it, you know, we have to explain and train them in every aspects in every spheres so for example you are talking about the material so right now we, it got uh, it got approved and we are thinking about the smart classes where in dtisl or in <clears throat> this course so they can uh, we would have the live classes at the same time and the other people can also see at the same time they can replicate to us and they can teach uh, other people as well great new technology exciting so the RCI material for DTISL, it's still in process and it's getting translated and we are providing it other to other people also. It's in process right now. Okay, so the last question now, the students who are going to, uh, the students which apply to DTISL in the future, what will be your advice to them? So when I see uh, the people, you know, right now, you be uh, have a running water from our tap that is normal when we have a more running water from the tap likewise we would have more of a deaf people who will get the jobs and there would be opportunities i know in future i could have a vision that yeah there would be more of job opportunities would be there but we could have a, a short-term courses as well where we can have it for uh two days or 15 days you know after ttisl when people who have done, we can have a short training, the theory for the people, so that it's ISLRTC's responsibility. So people demand for a lot of things, they would like to teach, they would like to get the guidance, how they can uh, do well in their school, on, they ask for the weekend classes, so ISLRTC is getting a lot of demands from such people. So yeah, so when we would have more of deaf people, now, People are learning and we would be having more of the deaf candidates who will be graduating from the DTISL group. And we will have more awesome. such a Thank you so much. I hope there's nothing else to add. Thank you so much, Vishwajit. If there are any more questions, we'll have you over again. Okay, so I might have to leave later on. Now we'd like to have Neeraj. Hi, Neeraj. Hello. Please let us know a little about yourself, what you do. Thank you, Tushar, and thank you for your team for having me here. So my name is N-W-E-R-H-J Neeraj. This is my sign name. I'm from Rajasthan. So I'm working as an ISL teacher. So yeah, a uh, few times, sometimes I teach uh, first to eighth class as well. Standard, first standard student also. I uh, recently saw something about you that uh, you have finished your B.A. HIA, right? When did you finish? Yes, so I have completed in 2014. Okay, so I saw 2014 somewhere in Rajasthan, you have been advocating with the government for the post of a deaf teacher? Have you been uh, advocating for it? Can you please let us know about the process? What is the aim? Yes, right. Good question you have asked. 
So about the BRHI course, we thought that we, I'm so interested to teach to their students, you know, when they got uh, graduated from the course, I went over there. So they told me that, you know, you are not allowed to teach here. So they said that you're a deaf person. They said that you need to do the lip reading and all you need to speak. So I told them it's our language, ISL. I, I, I don't know how to lip read and how, how to use uh, do such this way. So I tried to research and I found that yeah, job uh, identification, right? The which is identify for the person with disabilities. Where it is mentioned, the other disabilities are allowed to do it. Then we fight for that, and we thought we thought that okay, we connected with the deaf leaders with National Association of the Deaf. They said yes, we are still fighting for this thing. But in our Rajas, in here in Rajasthan, there are still people who have studied. They don't want to get, uh, be stuck in that. But we were lucky that in our department, we discussed of them, uh, discussed and explained them. Our boss was good and she understood. But yeah, in India, they said if the government will accept and they, if they will identify the post, they said if Department of Empowerment of Person with Disabilities, then they will improve it and they will identify this post. So after 2021, uh, 2021, when they approved it later on, then they have the deaf people, deaf people as teaching uh, to the student. But yeah, it's still difficult. Some people are still reluctant to win. So with Rajasthan, uh, the government department, has it accepted that the deaf will get a post? BADHI, they want to change it and have deaf teachers? Yes, now they are open for the deaf people and they are having deaf teachers. And it's okay if there's a deaf teacher who does not use spoken language? Yes, they just want them to be certified only. And when have, will this start or when will? It just started this year only. So now it will be going to be this way as well in the future. So people who would be applying for the job, they need to get passed in that the interview, in the, that exam, and then they can get the job. So something related, Pallavi said that the Supreme Court mentioned that uh, India has, I mean, uh, very quick, special educators are very few and there have to be uh, more special educators. So they have to make more value. So this is very connected. If Rajasthan government approves this and this advocacy effort wins, there can be such a major change and the teachers will start. Yes, now it's become, it has become a simple process. Earlier it was very difficult. But you know, government, it's, you know, you know, the government process file going from here and there. But yeah, the, the thing is, yes, they have accepted it. Now it's in the uh, progressive way and hope we will succeed in this. So do you think that it is about the RPWD and you have used that? Yes, RPWD talks about this thing that teachers, you can have a teacher who could be a person with disabilities. So it means you can have a deaf person or a blind person, any of the disabled Disability, personal disability, you can have. So basically, a BADHI, if you have a BADHI or a DADHI, they, you know, the certification they can have. So basically, certification is required, correct? So with that, I'll have the last question. Students who are interested to get into DAD and BAD or who have already done their courses, what will be your advice uh, to them? Some uh, one suggestion or one tip you want to give yes one thing i would like to say when they are they are graduating from the d8 or the ed course i want all of the tech people to stay connected so i'm also working and in ngos what i'm seeing there are hearing people who have done d8 and uh, b8 in a child they don't know the sign language you know and all the deaf people they are just copying so they were just doing the basic gestures and not the proper sign language we have suffered now the other our generation will also suffer no so hearing people are not aware but yeah we have few deaf people who are trying best but they're already one and they're asking the hearing people they're saying oh you are doing good and you can go ahead with your efforts they are not getting support from other hearing uh, colleagues so that's the thing that yeah why hearing people just to get the money just to get the salary they don't have an aim to teach deaf students it's better to remove the remove them from the post but how we can complain you know the other disabilities they can uh, 
raise their voice easily. But what about the deaf people? It's difficult for us. Thank you so much, Neeraj. That is really great. If we'll have more questions related to your topic, we'll have you over again. Thank you so much. Sure. Questions are always welcome. So uh, we will have Poonam now. Poonam Sahu. Yes, I'm here. Hope you can see me. Yes, I can see well. Can you please let us know about yourself? This is my sign name. I am P W O N A M S A H U Poonam Sahu. I am a teacher at the Early Intervention Project with the H W S P S H I. So, what you had studied before? How did you get this job? Sure. So, I uh, after finishing my school, I studied my D Ed, and uh, yeah, it was with a lot of hearing. students it was a really testing time i had to be really really patient so after finishing the course in 2019 and hearing about the dti so i was really interested and didn't waste any time joining that course because i really love signing and i think i have great uh, expressive skills people have a really nice time talking to me they understand me very easily so you know i had been waiting i had been waiting for the course and as soon as i got to know there was a dtisl program i applied for it i'm really happy uh, that i am a dtisl graduate yes you can continue so two years of that and finished it in 2021 and yeah that's my education so you have done a two years dtisl course right after that you got the job correct in haryana welfare society school correct yes So, how much experience you have? Just recently, it's been just two months. I joined in May. Okay, so one question I would like to ask you: When you have done the EHI course, you couldn't comprehend the thing what teacher was saying. So, and you face challenges. Now, what? Uh, now, Pallavi, who have fought for the curriculum, I hope the things will change. Can you share your experience? i was yes mainstream there were a lot of hearing students and my challenges were that teachers the media of instruction was spoken language the dtisl is fully accessible because it's my language they are all talking in sign language and that's why i really had a great experience and comparing it with my dead experience i had a real tough time a really really hard time and uh, you know i just managed to pass and uh, with that you know i it was a hard time and i was really happy that it passed but yes the dtisl was a really interesting time thank you so much for sharing your experience and you got the job as well so you being a role model for all the deaf people here so we will see that yeah people would get more opportunities in the future absolutely possible so one last person sapan Like perhaps Sapan once again. Hey. So I have a question to you, Sapan. So in Haryana Welfare Schools, how many uh, classes are there? Uh, are from do you have classes from for senior secondary or till uh, high secondary only? Thank you. That's a great question, Tushar. So all the centers at Haryana have schools. and uh, all of them are under the hwsh uh, sp chair brand uh, and we are 0 to 5 0 to 8 0 to 10 and 0 to 12 karnal hisar has kg to 12 gurgaon is trying hisar already and karnal have class 1 to 12 college we have right after school the dd and dtisl program which is in panchkula plus we have the early intervention project which is running at all the eight centers we are providing uh, sign language access to deaf children and isl you know we are teaching all the subjects but at the same time we have to understand indian sign language becomes a subject 
and we have made books in ISL for classes zero to five, which are being used at the early intervention centers, which the teachers at all eight centers are using and the deaf teachers at our institute have made it. Very soon we'll get the ISBN number and we'll be able to share these books. Uh, we have got uh, approval from uh, you know um, the authorities. See, all hearing students have books in English and their own languages, right? Finally, we will have books in ISL. See, the ISL A, B, C level was one such course, right? Very later, DTISL program came so later, but children need that right from the beginning. That's what we are trying here at the Haryana Welfare Society. And, you know, people are still trying, but we have already, you know, started providing sign language access right from birth. You asked about the DIDHI program and the DTISL program. We have 120 students. Sorry, the national education policy came in 2021, but we have been doing that from a very uh, long time. So we have already 30, 30, and there'll be 27 more students who have joined us. We have 19 to 22 students in the DEd program who are hearing as well as deaf. And we are also going to have the new batch coming in soon. The Maharishi Dayanand University also has the DTISL program, which will accept 30 students. And that's the first time, you know, this university is, you know, starting this course also. So that Maharishi Dayanand University, they have collaborated with any deaf college or school? No, no. So MDU is a mainstream university. What uh, we are talking about is that we have interpreters who can go there and study. But HWS PHI has collaborated with MDU. And also SUPWA, which is also in Rotak. Their students can come in and uh, uh, apply at these courses. We have interpreters can, which can be provided because we are already working with this university. And very soon, uh, you know, uh, colleges which uh, will have uh, in Haryana near to our place, we will also be able to provide ISL interpreters. Thank you so much. So in the chat, I also saw, you know, I just want to add something in the chat. I saw that DTISL, we do uh, talk, uh, you know, teach English. Some of them are asking why is English being taught? See, we have to understand that deaf teachers are teaching ISL and they teach English, there might be some mistakes. Why? Because if we have good understanding of English and then you finish the DTISL course, you will become a bilingual and you can be teaching. So they don't have to depend on interpreters. All the subjects which are in English, you will be able to teach. That is the reason we are teaching basic English in DTISL, not very advanced English. So please uh, don't worry because RPWD Act 2016 already says that there have to be more persons with disabilities as teachers, that is deaf teachers, also blind teachers. So wherever you are as a deaf student or a student with disability, there'll be teachers who are persons with disability. At the same time, you know, if deaf teachers are there, you will be teaching deaf students in the future. So one last question I would ask, like to ask you related to the job opportunity. So when people graduated from the DTISL course, and uh, like what Monica has mentioned, there are less deaf teachers and people are saying that we have, we do have the institutions, but we do not have the deaf teachers, but where we can find the deaf teachers here? Yes, this is the right thing. So in school, we have the school might provide the job opportunities, or maybe they can government get department. the contractual job also, right? Yeah, all these government offices need ISL, uh, you know, access. Now, let me tell you, Coimbatore, I went there. Um, there was a batch of B.Ed. students and they are supposed to teach B.Ed., right? But there's a hearing person who's teaching ISL. And that has been going on for so long. In Pune as well, the ISL course or the ISL number of hours are taught by hearing people. And they're saying that we have been applying, there are no hearing, there are no deaf teachers. But we have a lot of DTISL past graduates. Why not get them there? Yes, right. Thank you so much. If deaf people would 
like to ask a question, we will have it once again. Great, thank you. Who have raised a hand? Yes, so what Sapan has explained about the DTISL course, people are saying that why we need to have a, uh, why we need, we need to teach the English, that's also important. We can't focus on the ISN only. So when you will be having hearing, uh, hearing people who would be teaching for the, for become an interpreter, so that is more important for you to learn English also so that you can communicate with them as well. When you are talking about the bilingual, so also you need to become bilingual as well. ISL being the foundation language, then you can learn about the spoken language also, correct? So earlier, when I studied from zero to 12th class, we had a subject, you know, but I got confused how to uh, proceed with it later on when we saw that we have a A, B and C level in ISL. We uh, learn about the IS, the grammar and facial expressions about the, everything that had impacted me. A lot. So then it was easier to learn the spoken language, right? So I want DDISL course. Uh, people should, I would encourage people to apply for DDISL course. But when I say it myself uh, and also the other hearing people, when, when they get their first language, right, they start learning Hindi or the other their regional languages. Likewise, they know that yeah, they feel uh, strong and confident, right? because they have learned their first language. But what about deaf people? Then we are learning at our later stage of life. So we want about we want to do about the deaf culture and deaf identity at our early age, right? So that deaf people would know about it. That then that way you can learn everything and anything, right? So you want to encourage more of the people the ISL. If you wish learn everything, then you will be able to teach other people as well. So I would like uh, the people who would like to become a teacher, they should go for this course. Sure, sure. That's so late. We should not delay it. And the earlier, the better. Thank you so much, Sunil. Sunil, please uh, be with us. There'll be questions and then we'll have you over. I would just uh, uh, like to summarize about the panelists and their suggestions we talked about the dtisl and the dhi course the future is great if you want to become a teacher if you're interested in teaching you have to be certified and uh, of course you have to be interested if you're motivated you can join any of these two courses there are a lot of opportunities we will now open up to taking questions from our audience. We have some hands raised. Can we uh, have Vivek? Hi, Vivek. Hello. Vivek. Yes, okay. hi. You have a question? Yes, I have a question. And uh, this, your question is for uh, which panelist? To Neeraj. Yes. Oh. Okay, let's have Neeraj. Neeraj, are you here? Yes, we can see Neeraj. Neeraj, there is a question for you from uh, Vivek. Just one question, Vivek, please. Yes, one question. So when they are uh, hearing people, they are applying for the DHI course and they are, they don't know about the ISL, right? And there are uh, deaf people who are saying the teachers don't know ISL, but they're saying that we are certified. And they say that, yeah, we do have the ISL course also in our curriculum. But we want to have the more hours for the ISL. That is in fact true. The DA HI course, the syllabus has mandatory number of ISL hours, but then, you know, the organizations which are not accepting, they are reluctant to get a deaf teacher. We have to fight for it because the problem is, you know, 
that uh, the policy has to be required we have to make that change and tell that this becomes a policy and you say that this has to be mandated and this is required then that change can come and the second teacher second thing is that you know the f teachers are not nearby they are far but doesn't matter you know in case you know you have isl teachers not many of them are there some of them you know i know they are signing just like me but we need more isl teachers we need uh, more deaf uh, professionals with that i think that will change the dhhi or the bhhi course has to teach there's the mandatory number of isl hours and that has to be completed and that has to be taught by an isl teacher but then you know we don't have so many isl professionals but yeah. and they're not being taught so much understood thank you we have komala hi komala is there a question and which who is the panelist you want to uh, ask the question i want to ask sapan all right we'll just have sapan join us sapan can you join us please? hey hi sapan so this komala and she has a question for you Hi, so I I have a doubt. I would like to ask you. So an ISL RTC, when you after twelfth you are applying for BCom course. No, BCom students can also apply twelfth okay. class. Okay. So the twelfth students or the BCom uh, students who apply for the course, some people are hard of hearing, some are deaf, and some are the good signers. So when they start teaching them, they. start teaching them at the beginning so while they are teaching them at the at the beginning why they ask them to learn by themselves few things are you talking uh, is this related to indian sign language research training center then i am not the right person because i am from the haryana welfare society we should have vishwajit then oh that was vishwajit sorry i got confused so vishwajit is not here with us just to let you know Yeah, I just request you to just fix the signing space, your screen a little, please. Okay. Anyway, if Vishwajit is not here, let me uh, share some of my opinions. Is it good? Okay, no problem. Uh, at ISL RTC, they have there there are lot of uh, students, but the teaching staff. is limited and they are really busy with a lot of different kind of uh, tasks they are working with ncert translation translating curriculum but the thing is basically some of the teachers who do not use sign language but they do also have interpreters and they have interpreters in the class but then again i am not at isl rtc so i don't know you can ask vishwajit on my behalf so whenever people uh, apply and they are coming for the they are coming In the beginning, you know, start uh, teaching them all of the things. After one year, you can ask them to learn the things by themselves. If you are not teaching, that would be easy. When a person is joining for the first time, they are confused. They are facing challenges and barriers at the same time. And then you are asking them to learn by themselves. I'm a little confused, actually, Komla. Talking about the DTISL course, after they finish the course, they make errors while at a job. no for the first year for example for example people are applying for the course right so we have a 6 month course and a 8 month course so when the teachers is teaching them after that they say when they feel that they are scale one it's their decision if they would like to use the sign language with their friends or not if they are if they feel they feel that they are expert i think basically what she's saying that you know with the first semester and the second semester when they are asked to teach and present maybe many of them feel reluctant they are not that uh, confident and they back out and they drop out 
So I think that, it would be better if you can email to ISLRTC and ask them because I can't answer you on behalf of the ISLRTC. Would you be able to inform Vishwajit since he's not here? Okay. Thank you, Komla. So we have 10 minutes only now. So Utkarsh, we have Utkarsh. Initiative connection is hazy. So to whom you would like to ask the question? Pallavi Kapan. Two people. Hope uh, you can see me. So my first question is to you. I want to talk about the DHI course. There are a lot of deaf students. I've told that 25 deaf students have applied. That's really nice. But the oralism and the speech language, I you know, is it mandatory? Because that really kills the joy of this course. What do you think about that? Yes, to have a right reason for it, but now the curriculum has changed. So we fought for it and it got changed now. Also, we being Pallavi and also we have other people also who knows about the sign language. There was Sunil as well, we invited him, he explained about the facts to him, then concepts were clear. So it's important for the teachers to know and also you need to have the knowledge of the academic subjects as well in detail about the, uh, so that you would know about the psychology of a deaf student. It's good to learn about other things as well that you can uh, talk about. But I know, talk about this thing, but now the things are better, but not the 100% good, but yeah, the curriculum has changed. Okay. Great, I think Utkarsh, there's some internet issue. Just one question. I'm sorry, Utkarsh. There are a lot of other deaf students, deaf people also with uh, questions. Hopefully, you can talk to Pallavi and uh, ask her the question directly. Yes, you can connect with me. Uh, so, who else do we have? Okay, we have Vijay. Yes. Okay, your question. Who do you want to uh, address the question to? Monica. Okay, all right. Can we have, uh, can we request Monica to please join us? Okay. okay. Hope. Hope you can see me right. Yes. So you were talking about the IDBA school. D So I was there for one year. Uh, I just want to understand, you know, the job uh, offers, government jobs, or, uh, you know, are there one year courses related to the, uh, and then we can get into the government jobs, like DCA, this course, the one year course, do we get, I mean, after the certification, uh, possible to apply in government jobs, per, per, permanent or private or government sector, whatever. So let me answer for your question. DCA is not uh, like promising any government job for you. It's a diploma course only. So there are uh, courses, people who are doing the DCA, also they are doing the DA and the BA course. So along with it, DCA they are doing and that's how they get recruited and they get hired. So in MP, there are teachers who are get hired. They have done BA. That's, that is mandatory and also DCA is also mandatory. If they don't have the DCA course, they will not get hired. You know, we are right now, we are in the technology uh, generation where uh, these things are required. So you need to have a DCA course as well. So it's a one year course, not a three or four years course. So three or four, four year course is a degree course, correct? It's a diploma course. DSA is just a diploma course. That means to which know about how to operate the computer and how to work on it. So if you have done with BA and DCA, then it would be possible for you to get the government and the private job. Thank you, thank you. After your uh, explanation, I understand. 
So yeah, this is for everyone, you know. Right now, it's very important to work on the computer system to and to have the knowledge. Right now, we are on working online. So if you will have the DCA course here as well, uh, so you can get the job. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying, uh, Monica. And uh, we have one more person. Do we have time? We'll take two minutes. Hello. I would like to ask Neeraj. All right. Okay. Neeraj, can you please uh, join us? Hi, can you see me? Thank you. Hello, Neeraj. As you have done dear coach and you are teaching to the students, but I have a doubt, I would like to ask you. So, earlier we do have the deaf students and right now also we have a deaf student, but now students are not applying for the courses in Bombay. So, for example, we have D8 course, right? After D8 course, students, if you would have less students, what we can do in that? True, I understand your question. The reason, you know, that these courses are also being started at other places, no? Nearby to your place, your, your center. Well, I'm talking about the deaf school. The uh, deaf schools, now we, we, have, we see less deaf students in the schools. Only four or five students, that's all. Yes, yes. I can share my experience that, uh, you know, the different states have uh, you know the DTIL, DTISL course so maybe 30 seats maybe they only get 10 to 12 because they're staying here and there but there are more centers opening up so that is the reason the numbers are changing but there are still very less students we can see in the institutions Right. I, I understand. If you want more students, you know, you have newspaper advertisements, which really helps parents, uh, you know, who they read newspapers, they get information and you tell them that this is a school, you have a bilingual school. Sweet so districts and towns. I'm sorry, he was talking about the schools. Neeraj is saying that this numbers are so because there are a lot of different schools opening up now. See, here we also have to understand that there are a lot of NGOs who open up just because of the funding from the government, but their quality and the level of education they're providing is really bad. But if you have a school and it's bilingual, uh, I will request more marketing, which you can do on newspapers and Facebook. Hopefully, the student numbers will increase. Hope you have your answer. Thank you. We can have two more questions only now. Which is done. Oh, your question. Pallavi. Okay, you want to ask Pallavi. Okay, Pallavi. My question is that uh, subject teaching like math and all these. Uh, is it, what is the age where it should start? Subjects should start teaching subjects. You are asking about a D8 course or? No, math, science. What is the age of eligibility? I think she's saying 30 years, 40 years teach eligibility. So there is no age criteria anyone can apply for it. You just need to be 12th pass and then you can apply for it. And you, do, you need to have a 50% aggregate. Age doesn't matter here. So yeah, age is not mentioned. And also, if you would like to join a job, what would be the age criteria? Yes, we have an age criteria for it. It's 18 to 42 years in Haryana, in Haryana. But I'm not sure about the other states in India. Maybe in uh, common, 18 to 42. But in, in NGO, uh, more than 42 years, you can also apply. Okay, my question is clear, thank you. So, one last question. 
Hi. Hi, Sumit. So to whom you would like to ask the question? I want to ask my question to Neeraj. Neeraj, okay. Hello, hello, thank you. Uh, Neeraj, I just have a small question. So, at the Jabalpur school, I learned ISL, BTISL, and uh, sorry, I learned ISL. Sorry, Kanpur? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Right. Kanpur. At Kanpur, you taught me ISL, and that was really a good experience for me. Uh, what my question is that these opportunities people who would like to apply isl this. sorry yeah you can go on yeah isl uh, people who would like to apply in islrtc and haryana welfare school that are very far away but you know in schools uh, now we can have isl subject also for the hearing people they can easily learn from the all social media things if they would like to learn this but if a deaf person uh, look around for the materials they get bored and they don't and also the parents not allow them to go outside and on YouTube also we don't get the accessible videos. So also we asked our relatives to help us to uh, uh, let us go outside. But you know, some deaf people, they are, they have financial crunches and they don't have the uh, financial, they are not financially independent to go outside and to learn things. So. So, uh, to inform you, Sumit Neeraj is not with us. He's facing internet issues. Sorry. Neeraj, can you see us? Sorry, what's your sign I, I, name? Yeah. Okay, Tushar, no problem. Next time we can try, okay? Sure. Great. Thank you. So we started at 7.30 and we it's 9 and uh, we are on time. I would just like to uh, conclude by saying hopefully everyone understood the DED, DTIS, and other courses which offer a lot of opportunities. We would like to thank all the panelists, Pallavi, Monica, Vishwajit, Neeraj, Saban, and Sunil, and Rahul, as well as Poonam, sharing all your experiences